So you're new to filmmaking and you're thinking about becoming a director. Here are some helpful tips that I've discovered over the past couple of years on my journey as a full-time filmmaker. Everybody's story is gonna look different. Everybody's journey to becoming a filmmaker is going to be completely unique to their own circumstances. But I do have a few things in particular that I wanna share that I think that you can take away from this and kind of implement into your own lives. And if your goal is to become a full-time filmmaker, then hopefully these tips can help you. Prior to doing any film work, I was a photographer and I had been doing photography for about five or six years. So I had an Instagram page and that's where I posted all of my stuff. And I had in my header, indigenous photographer. So I guess takeaway number one right off the bat is don't underestimate the power of social media, even in today's age. I think we're moving into a space where we believe that social media platforms are too saturated. But if there's something unique about you, then that should be incorporated into your social media somehow, and it gives you an unfair advantage. So think about what your unfair advantage could be for social media and make sure that you use that to your advantage. In my case, it was I was Willustaque and I was creating work that has to do with my culture, somebody saw that and thought that I would be a good fit for this for this director position. I have a lot of value from that experience that I, I want to share with you. The first thing that I took away from being a director on this particular job is how to act as a director, what the responsibilities of a director are. Before that, I didn't even really know what a director did per se. I know that a director would have the overall vision for a film, but I didn't know kind of like the day-to-day -day work and all of the different tasks that a director has to do during the creation of the film. The reason why this is important to mention here is because you can start implementing these actions, whether you're being paid or asked to do a director role or not, you can start acting as a director and producing things with your name as a director on those pieces. And as a result, you'll probably start to get client work. People will start to recognize you as a director. It's a little bit of fake it until you make it, but once you have a few things out with your name on it as director, it's gonna get a little bit easier. So in times of uncertainty, I could look to my team members and ask them questions. And that's another takeaway here is, don't be afraid to admit that you don't know it all. Yes, you have to fake it until you make it, but that's only in terms of calling yourself a director and having your name on things as a director, not in terms of you just have to wing every single decision. No, you're gonna have people around you that you can ask for advice. There are people online, there might be filmmakers that you already know, you may have already worked with certain filmmakers, you know, there are forums online, there are videos, there are books, there are lots of resources to learn more about directing. And that's part of what this channel is as well, is I wanna share information about what directing is and what it looks like so that you can become a director yourself. But again, a takeaway from this is it's okay not to know everything. So I knew that I had to create a 45 minute film because it had to fit in a broadcasted hour. The film ended up going to CBC Gem. Uh, but no matter what the length of your film is, you're gonna to wanna to think about your film in terms of acts. And the way that I like to think about it is act one through five, maybe six. This kind of helps you structure your story. And once your story is structured, you're able to write way more efficiently opposed to just sitting down and trying to create a film. For me, I really had to structure how I wanted the film to be delivered. For example, I knew that I wanted to have a lot of emotional payoff kind of in the toward the end of the film, right? You want that climax moment at the end of the film. But I also knew I wanted to hook the audience in the beginning. So I used that tactic of structuring my film through the process of creating acts one through five in this case. So that's another thing is structure your stories. Your roles and responsibilities as a director is the creative vision of the film, but you need to be able to convey those ideas to the rest of your team. Otherwise, you're not really gonna get the film that you have in your mind. And so creating this act structure is really gonna help you convey that idea. Convey your ideas often to your team and don't be that director that can't take advice. So no matter what project I'm working on now, we have this idea of the best idea wins, which means get your ego out of the way and listen to what people are telling you about your story ideas. It's okay for people to question your ideas in your film. And if you can't justify them, then maybe it's not that strong of an idea. Or maybe the other person just has a better idea. You need to drop your ego and you need to be able to listen to the other team members. It has to be best idea wins for the sake of the film. You can't let your ego get in the way of that. Otherwise, it, the story's gonna suffer. This last part is drop your ego. You know, 
I felt a lot of imposter syndrome. I was very insecure about my ideas and just my title as a director. You know, if people challenged me, I often felt like, well, I'm just not good at this. Um, they don't see me as a director. But those are growing pains that I went through. While it's hard to admit that, it's true. And I'm just saying it because I think that that could happen, you know, to other aspiring film directors as well. It's just kind of like this idea of the fragile ego when you're not secure in your abilities yet. If you put in the time and the work and you give yourself the room to mess up a lot and to ask other people for advice and to see your projects through, then you'll get it done as well. But you gotta be committed just like anything in life. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video, but I hope I was able to provide you with some value for this one. I plan on making this a series uh, about directing and filmmaking. I also plan on doing videos about cameras and also my own video journal series. And so I want this channel to be a designated spot for people to go to learn about directing and filmmaking and get to see it actually happen uh, versus just me talking about it. I plan on showing behind the scenes and, and all sorts of different kinds of content. So again, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.